Thank you, sir. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy again to bring to you uh, this the topic of today, dental ceramics, uh, in our online lecture series, which I'll be discussing a lot about uh, uh, ceramics again as a follow-up to what we did yesterday. And as a matter of fact, uh, it promises to be very exciting. No doubt you have a lot to learn today. You are going home with the understanding the process of uh, ceramic manufacture. Uh, what is, does it mean to manufacture ceramic? You have uh, a knowledge of that, without doubt. And again, um, you'll be able to identify and explain classification of ceramic systems. I told you yesterday there are so many uh, systems in ceramics. People have made ceramics in different ways and um, they have made different systems and you will be able to understand and classify them today. And also, you know, yesterday we touched on meta ceramic system. We we'll talk more about it today and types of meta ceramic system. We shall be able to understand the firing circle of ceramic and identify manipulation and technical consideration for ceramics. Without doubt, um, you see, today's lecture is loaded, but actually it's a follow-up to what we did yesterday, and I know that it will be best of experience for you. Uh, here we go. The ceramic manufacture and system. The process of manufacture of ceramic is called printing. The process is called printing. The process of manufacture of ceramic is called printing. If you are asked what is printing, it is the process of manufacture of ceramic. And then um, various components of ceramics are mixed together. Yesterday you discovered that we have the Vespa, we have the aluminum, we have the alkalis like potassium and sodium. All these components are mixed together and then um, they are fired. They are fired to fuse together. And once they are fired and are fused together, while they are still hot, they are dropped in water and they are quenched. As in the heat and the hotness is refused. And that will cause cracking. Then the product from this is now. Uh, powdered, and they are now supplied to us in the lab for use. You know, it, it looks so simple, but it's, uh, a lot of technicalities are involved. That is, the components are put together, fire them, once you fire them, they are fused together, they become a whole, and once they fuse together, as they were still hot, they are dropped in water. Once it is dropped, it is not what we do. That is not how we use ceramic. I'm telling you the process of manufacturing it from the industry. So that uh, material is fused together now. It is now uh, quenched in water and it cracks. It's now powdered. You know, the ceramic is powdered for us. We receive powder, ceramic to do, then we mix with liquid, then we uh, we, 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 lay, we lay it on the, uh, the coping, the metal coping, before we now fire it in the uh, in our porcelain uh, furnace. So, but in the industry, take the process of first of all uh, firing and putting it together in under hot uh, uh, temperature, very high temperature. Then it's fresh in water. Then it is now powdered. Once it is powdered. It's now supplied to the lab for use. That is how uh, we get our ceramic that are supplied in bottles in the lab. Then we now take it from that point and begin to do the processes of uh, uh, of uh, building a crown or a bridge, and then making our appliance and restoration uh, for our patient according to the requirement uh, of the of the patient. Now, let, let's look at different porcelain ceramic systems. Like I told you yesterday, there are so many of them, so many ceramic systems. 
and um, it is okay for us to be familiar with this system. Like I told you, you can never learn it alone because there are so many that this lecture will not cover in ceramic system. But as much as we cover it today, no doubt, you have a lot to learn. Now we have, uh, uh, like I said, several ceramic systems that I assist, and sometimes we are not careful, it's so confusing that uh, you, you, you may miss them. But what we are going to touch today, you will not be able to uh, miss them. So we have one type of porcelain. That is the type, this type, it does not contain any kind of other material. And they are used uh, for inlay, they are machined. That is uh, this, uh, what is it called? This uh, machine, I mean, milling machine and all that. They are usually made uh, into blocks. Then they can now be machined into different shapes. Uh, of crown that you want it to be, and so on and so forth. But the second type is layered uh, porcelain, layered with different types of porcelain. That is, we have the perspective porcelain, like I told you yesterday. We have other types that you lay, it, they are layered. So for that reason, they are not uh, uh, like the first one, which is a single type of uh, uh, porcelain. So, you see that we are able to discover two types from start. And then from there, you begin to see several other subdivisions. Now, subdivision of layered porcelain, because that is what we are going to be talking about more today. We have the core, then, then we have the veneer. The core, they are freshly mixed porcelain. And they are, when you mix them, it's like wet sand. For some of us who have uh, been in internship and they have witnessed it, once you mix it with a liquid, it looks like wet sand. And uh, uh, they are now made up and built, laid on the, uh, on the, on the metal, on the coping. It's a crown, it is a bridge, you lay it. On the coping, that is the metal framework, and that is where uh, the the starting point of building your ceramic starts, whether for a crown or a brick. So, uh, but the veneer type is different, as in the teeth are there, the natural teeth are there. The veneer is used to cover them. Maybe if a tooth has problem, for whatever problem that the tooth may have, and you want to cover up maybe discoloration. Uh, or maybe it has damaged, and for that reason, veneers are prepared to cover them. These days, veneers are not used, uh, are not very common in practice, because otherwise, um, instead of making veneers these days, people will just prepare the tooth and put a, a crown on it, maybe a jacket crown on it. So that is uh, the two subdivisions from layered uh, ceramic that I'm talking about, the core and the veneer. The core is usually the substructure. It's, 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 it's a, uh, the, the, the substructure on which the, uh, the, the superstructure will be built upon. That is uh, about that. Now, let's look at classification of uh, ceramic. Let's look at different classification and how to describe this uh, ceramic system. The ceramic system that I want to talk about, they are majorly classified into two. The base substructure or core materials are usually used for it. That, that is the one I just talked about uh, previously. And then the base on fabrication methods. These are two different uh, ceramic systems that have been identified. And this two ceramic system can be subdivided into many other uh, subdivisions. The base on substructure, uh, substructure or core materials is used and it has the following subdivisions. Here we have A, which is metal ceramic, B, all ceramic. Let me go to the other before we explain them one by one. Then uh, we have subdivision of each of the two that we have. So we have the base substructure, 
We have A and B, which is meta ceramic, which is all ceramic system. Now let us look at the other subdivision for meta ceramic. And they are usually used for porcelain fused to meta. They are called PFM meta system, PFM system rather. Then one, we have cast meta ceramic restoration. Here you have subdivision of one, cast noble meta alloys, two, cast based meta alloys, three, cast titanium, that is ultra low fusing porcelain, that is under meta ceramics uh, restoration uh, in meta ceramic system. Then we have switch meta ceramic restoration. Here we have good alloy foil coping and we have bonded uh, platinum foil coping. In the number two, that is the switch meta ceramic restoration. They are, they are not usually, um, they are not usually fired. They are, they are supplied in tin foil to uh, the, 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 uh, the ceramic is now, I mean, uh, furnished. It's now uh, a switch on the restoration that is made. So they are usually supplied in good alloy foil kind of um, uh, material. So uh, in the past, they are called, uh, example is CapTech. They are not common these days. They are not used anyway. But for purpose of uh, teaching, we must teach you this. Example is CapTech. Example is uh, Renaissance. These are different examples. But definitely, in practice, as much as I know in this country, we you can't see things like that again. Then bonded planet, platinum foil coping. This also, they are quite a type of sewage metal ceramic restoration. Uh, they are not also in common use in practice. What is in common use, even the cast metal ceramic number two there, the cast noble metal alloys, they're not in common use. Cast based metal alloys, yes, uh, not very much in use because of the cost, and um, but people still use them, no doubt. But just like number B of the base on substructure, we have uh, the all ceramic system, uh, which I don't know if there's any lab in Nigeria that's doing that. The all ceramic, in this case, there's no metal that is involved. An example of that, or another subdivision rather, is platinum foil matrix on this porcelain restoration. These are not a uh, very common uh, system, but uh, it's good for you to know this as well. Okay, then we have the castable glass ceramics. That is under the all ceramic that we just mentioned. An example of brand in this is called, uh, is called Dico. Dico, most of them were just, I may not have, I, I'm not, I cannot boast that I've seen some of them before. Where because events have overtaken them, because the castable glass ceramic is very difficult to make. So for that reason, it didn't stand the test of time. So some of these uh, ceramic systems are not in use, but it's good for you to know. Then the pressable glass ceramics, it's, so, it's, it's very common these days, but I don't think we have been doing that in Nigeria. The glass infiltrated core porcelain, that's another one that we're not sure is uh, popular and uh, is used in our system. Then the ceramic restoration from card cam ceramic blanks. Of course, except if there's anybody who is doing card cam in Nigeria now and is using ceramic blanks. That also is not in common use. And the ceramic uh, restoration from card cam, they are usually uh, supplied in blanks. So the blanks are fed into the milling machine and the milling machine will produce the appliance that have been designed with uh, the, the software. Uh, that have been previously uh, made. The ceramic restoration from copy and mill ceramic blanks. These are different variations of uh, ceramic. Then let us look at the platinum foil matrix condensed porcelain restoration, which is part of the old ceramic that we're talking about. We have confessional perspective porcelain restoration. We have porcelain restoration with aluminum core. Then we have ceramic jacket crown with lucite reinforced core. You see, these are different types. Don't be scared by different names and all those categorizations. They are just for your knowledge. Um, example of that is Optech 
HSP, ceramic jacket cramp. You see, where is this ceramic jacket cramp? It might sound so funny that uh, the, the people make that, but they are in existence and they, they may not be common in our system. Uh, then we have the castable glass ceramics, like I mentioned previously. Uh, I've never seen where anybody uh, put a centrifugal casting machine in place and begin to cast uh, ceramic. But it's in place in the use in the past. But because of the difficulties, uh, those ceramic systems have been abandoned. Then we have the pressable glass ceramics. That is very common in advanced countries. An example of that is lucid reinforced glass ceramics, which is IPS Empress. That's common too, but I don't think we have it in our system. Uh, Lithia desilicate uh, dis reinforced glass ceramic also is an IPS Empress system. Um, those ones who are in existence, I don't think it's available in our country, but you see our profession is advancing, no doubt. One day, all this will happen. Glass infiltrated core porcelain. Example is glass infiltrated aluminous core in serum. That's another ceramic system. Then we have glass infiltrated spinel core in serum spinel. We have glass infiltrated seconia core, which is in serum uh, seconia. Now, all these different types of um, ceramic system are made by companies who have done research and have come up with them. And so, and uh, for them, there are so many advantages that um, all those systems uh, provide that make them continue to stick to it. But it's good for you to know different systems that are available in the market. Uh, and are some of them that may have even gone out of use. Uh, ceramic restoration from CAD CAM, like I mentioned before, that you use also to do CAD CAM. I don't know anyone who has a, a milling machine in Nigeria now and may, um, uh, mills uh, ceramic plants. Uh, if we are at the end of my presentation, anybody uh, knows of any place where some of these things are still in use, I'll be happy to hear. Ceramic restoration from copy mill ceramic plants. That's another one for CAD CAM. Then ceramic restoration from CAD CAM uh, ceramic plants can also be still divided into different uh, categories, as you can see on the screen. We have this perspective porcelain blanks. It's called, the, the, another example of that is, uh, I mean, brand name is Fighter Blocks Mark II. Then we have a lithium desilicate glass ceramic blanks, IPS Empress there too, it's an example. IPS EMAS, uh, CAD, then CAV, those are blanks, those are systems. Glass infiltrated blanks, we have alumina, we have spinel, we have seconia. Partially sinta seconia blanks. We have feta, fighter e serum. Now, all these names, you may not be familiar with them. They are all ceramic systems that companies are making and supplying to the laboratories. And you see, that is why as data technologies, you have so many systems that you want to work with. The one that best suits you is the one that is your advice uh, to always work with. Then we have a ceramic restoration from copy me uh, ceramic blanks. Examples are Tile in Ceram. Then we have the uh, magnesium, sorry. Uh, this is the formula, but I, I tell you, I cannot, uh, I'm not sure if it's rightly positioned. There's a mistake here. Uh, because this aluminum, uh, the two should, have, should not be up there. Sorry for that, uh, Miss Robert. That is an uh, insurance spinner, no doubt. Um, we'll proceed now to the next uh, slide and see meta ceramic restorations. Meta ceramic restoration. Of course, when we talk of meta ceramic restoration, we are talking of combination of meta and ceramic. And we know yesterday we said um, it was um, uh, Shaz and Hodges that first uh, discovered metal ceramic. They made that breakthrough in ceramic system. And that was around 1950s to 1960s that they made this ceramic system. And that is a major breakthrough away from the 
uh, former shipment in ceramic use in the laboratory and in the general industry. So uh, the breakthrough uh, was said was successful because they added alumina to the ceramic system and begin uh, to possess some extra qualities like wear resistance, even though it's not so good. Uh, it also uh, provides more strength and uh, they can now be used for dentistry better than before. So uh, the metal ceramic system started from the development that uh, Charles and Hodges uh, was able to make by adding alumina to the, 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 uh, the perspective uh, ceramic. And that brought about uh, the metal ceramic system that we have today. So uh, what this simply means is uh, it's a combination of metal, that is the core or the framework. We call it core, we call it framework, we call it copy. So it depends on uh, your use of words. Some people call it a uh, framework, some call it core, some call it copy. And then uh, why the ceramic uh, uh, superstructure, uh, the real cer ceramic itself that is built on the, on the, uh, the copy, on the framework. Now, uh, in, in the early days of uh, developing ceramic, there used to be porcelain jacket crown. And that was in early days. I don't think in all my years I've seen porcelain jacket crown being made. Because um, as a matter of fact, we, uh, we, 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 we don't have more patient making demands for it. Because as a matter of fact, it's very expensive and the uh, patient prefers jacket crowns that we be less expensive. Then we used to use a uh, talk, uh, talk of AJC, acrylic jacket crown. Today, acrylic jacket crown is seen as a temporary restoration. In those days, there used to be permanent restoration. The porcelain jacket crowns, yes, um, they're more expensive and so they are not in demand. And they're they still being made, no doubt. But then, as a matter of fact, uh, it's not common with patient because of the high cost. But of course, advantages of porcelain make it uh, very, very important that uh, everybody who, who has can afford it will always uh, uh, ask for it. So porcelain jacket crown was used, which did not reinforce the cause, and so was weak and, and, and did not go far in the use of genetics. When McLean introduced alumina, uh, M. Clean introduced alumina uh, as core porcelain, which is better in strength. Okay, today about 90% of restoration involving the use of ceramic, metal ceramic type, uh, are what operators are using and they're more comfortable with it. And the success has been very, very, uh, very, very uh, challenging, very, very interesting. Uh, I mean, the success of metal ceramic system. Uh, and this was made possible because uh, the metal now and porcelain can bond very well. They bond together very well. And then their CT become better. Uh, that is uh, raising the CT of the ceramic in order to make it uh, compatible with that of metal. So bonding becomes better with metal ceramic as a result of the addition of alumina. You know, alumina gives it strength and makes it better. Uh, for making our restoration. If you look at this uh, diagram here, you see a lot of how ceramic has been put into use. I mean, different layers that are formed when you make your ceramic. The metal frame, as you can see here, is the coping. The color this show way here. That is the one that is sitting on the prepared tube. Then we have uh, the porcelain itself that is laid upon it. Before the porcelain is laid, the opaca is there that we have to shield the metal frame so that color and aesthetic problem will not be a problem. And then so, you have the metal frame, you have the opaque on it, 
then you begin to build your metal, I mean your porcelain. Your porcelain now, the gingiva area, you, you have to use a, a different ceramic to cover that so that you can simulate the gingiva. You have the, the dentine, the porcelain that you use for that so that it also uh, can give you a holistic um, restoration that will make it look natural. Then you have the surface glaze. It may not be as thick as this in your in your uh, in your real work, but there's no doubt if we uh, this is just a diagram to show you. Then we have the the, the, the incisor end where you add uh, uh, where, where, where you uh, make the incisor edge of the tooth, then the, the surface glaze, which is usually uh, the, the last that will be added before your uh, final restoration is produced. So uh, the different layering of your um, of your ceramic it starts from the uh, the, uh, the the meta framework that is placed on the prepared tube. Then the opaque, then the the porcelain itself, and the porcelain is made in layers. You have the dentin, you have the size, you have the area, and so on and so forth. Uh, these are things, these are different ways of laying uh, metal on, I mean, ceramic on metal to produce your restoration. Types of ceramic system. Like I told you, there's different ceramic system. We have talked about it before. Metal, they are divided into two. The cast metal ceramic restoration and the switch metal ceramic restoration. The number two, the switch is the one I said, it's not common these days. But cast metal ceramic restoration, which I just give you an image of how it's laid, uh, is the commonest to them. The advantages of this system and its wide acceptance are predictable. Uh, talking about cast metal ceramic, they are strong metal framework and its ability to withstand stress. Give the metal ceramic system an edge over other systems that have been done. Then the durability, biocompatibility, we talked about all this yesterday. The single crown, which I call PJC then, short and long span bridges are also possible with uh, metal ceramic. The PJC, sorry, I think I said something like, maybe it's not common these days, it's common. It's, but what I'm trying to say in our system is that it is not uh, in high demand. If it's ask laboratories, dental laboratory, how many demands they have for ceramic uh, restoration, they will tell you it's not comparable in any way with uh, acrylic. So acrylic is far more. The composition of uh, ceramic for metal bonding. Let's look at the composition, and I want to tell you this composition. They are they are not just um, uh, they are not cast in stone. So there could be variation depends on the manufacturer. But what is very important for us to know is that we should understand that silica, aluminum, soda, potash, boric oxide, zinc oxide, zirconia oxide are in different percentage when you are, want to make dentin porcelain. And see the percentage there. When you want to make enamel porcelain, this is the percentage. You can see them. So uh, this is just a sample composition. If a manufacturer is making a ceramic for metal bonding, it may not always be exactly this. That is the point I'm trying to uh, put across. So, but you should know that your ceramic system metal for metal bonding contains silica, alumina, soda, potash. And yesterday we discussed what uh, all these materials do, uh, why they are present in this composition. For example, aluminum give, uh, gives uh, strength. The soda and potash, they lower the temperature of the glass when they are being manufactured. Uh, boric acid, these are fluxes that are added and so on and so forth. So these are different uh, compositions that make the ceramic system for metal bonding. And um, they are used, uh, uh, I mean, they are made by manufacturers in different percentages. Like silica oxide here, 
for dating porcelain. For another manufacturer, it might not be exactly 59.2%. It might be a little bit different. But I don't think there used to be wide difference. No doubt about that. That is uh, how systems are defined. Okay. Um, every ceramic that has high content of uh, soda and potash, we is required to read the CTE. As you observe in the table of proposition above, this is necessary to enhance metal ceramic bonding. However, however, Akalis also raises the tendency of the ceramic to have defitrified. That is, it appears cloudy. That is a term that you take note of. When the Akalis are more in quantity, it raises the tendency, tendency for the ceramic to uh, defitrify. That is, another word for that is to appear cloudy. But if a good opaque is used, I think that will also solve uh, a lot of problem and prevent the, the aesthetic uh, problem to be reduced. That will be created by the uh, by raising the level of uh, uh, the alkalis. So uh, yesterday, I know I told you that when someone is using, um, maybe you have a ceramic that is working. He has something inside a bottle. You have another in another bottle, and it's layer laying the bay. I mean, it's laying the, the layers of the ceramic uh, uh, appliance that you want to make, and it's picking this material, it's picking another material. I want to tell you, all those materials are all ceramic. They are not different materials, but they are in different form. They are in different form. Just like you take corn. You can grind your corn, you can grind it, you can make it into different kind of food. You can also cook it raw like that, and so on and so forth. So they are made, a single material made with, from different uh, from the, uh, for, for different purposes, appearing in different forms so that it can be useful in different ways. Now, ceramics is usually supplied as enamine porcelain powder in various shades. They are the bottle, they are supplied to us in the lab in bottles. They can be in dentin porcelain powder in various shades as well. Liquid for missing enamel, dentin, gingiva, and transparent uh, material. So these are also uh, ceramic. Opaca, that you see, is also uh, ceramic. Uh, they are mixed in different ways and they are supplied so that the ceramics can use them in different ways. The gingerbread porcelain powder, they are also coming in periods to stimulate uh, the gingerbread. The transparent porcelain powder, uh, a variety of, of same colors, they are also made in a, uh, within, uh, they are also form of porcelain. They are just uh, used as a, a material to stain uh, the, your appliance. Then the glaze powder, then special liquid for missing uh, stains and glaze. These are all ceramic, uh, different forms of ceramic, and so that the, the ceramics can use it uh, when the need arises. If you want to glaze, you fix a bottle with a liquid form, you just smear it on it. And you will just think maybe it's using another material. That uh, glaze material is also uh, Oh, sorry. It looks like uh, my hand touched my, my mind. And uh, maybe you two are not trying uh, longer hearing me. However, I hope that has not lasted for too long. I just saw it now. Okay, uh, we continue. Manipulation and technical consideration. That is manipulation of ceramic and other technical consideration. It is possible, some of you like those who have done internship or those who did their CWS uh, may be able to make even contribution to this slide. The laboratory stages of uh, manipulating ceramic. I want to tell you that some of this may be job. People may shortcut, but there's no doubt in the fact that they are also very important if you want to understand how ceramics are used. Uh, let's see, number one, 
whilst pattern prepare according to restoration in mind. First, before you start doing your, your ceramic, you must make the opening. So the core has to be prepared and you start the process from your wax. And by lost wax technique, you, you heat and get the wax off, the mold, you pour your, your metal alloy into it, two is proof, and you get your course, uh, call uh, framework, your framework, that you're going to build your, build your ceramic on. You do the necessary, some plastering, cleaning, and all that, and your coping is ready. And then make sure your hand not touch it. And after you have done this, you degas. The gas is done in the oven by heating metal to high temperature for all sides to form on the metal surface, which will enhance the bonding with ceramic. Then the opaque, you recall the image I showed you a while ago, where we show different layers of how a final restoration should look like once you, uh, when you're using it, doing it to the lab. The opaque is laid with a brush used to mask metal color and bonding for slate to metal. So the opaque, does two major things. It will help bonding, it will also mask the color of the metal. Avoid touching metal surface with bare hands because your hands, if you touch your hand on any paper or on anything, you notice that there will be some oily thing that will be left. So that will contaminate your work. So you are expected to use, uh, I mean, uh, locking forceps, which will hold everything in place and uh, will enable you to uh, do your layering. And those who do layering very well, very easy, to take their brushes and after they have mixed with the liquid, they take it by bit by bit and begin to uh, lay it on the topping. And do that, use their uh, tissue paper to dry the liquid and it goes on like that until finally uh, it gets has built enough that is happy with, and then um, there will be firing uh, so that the firing is to get it uh, solidified and get it okay so that uh, you can, can re actually see the shape of the tube that you have made. And that process will continue until you finally get uh, the, the shape of the restoration you have. Uh, this is this is another is an example of how it is done. The ceramic there is laying the restoration on it. I mean the metal, sorry, the ceramic on the metal framework, and the, on the other um, picture top right, uh, using his uh, tissue paper to remove, to remove excess water, and then he takes it to the porcelain down left. Of your bar screen, and finally, you see um, the appliance. I mean, the uh, ceramic uh, crown are produced. Okay, let's consider the stages of finalizing the fabrication of ceramic tubes. These are the, the sequence. Just, I have just explained now, but let let me just take it again. Firing, sintering, and fusing condensing material. Uh, that is how, what is called firing. That is, is sintering, that is application of high temperature to cause the metal, I mean the ceramic to come together, contest and become the shape that you want it to be. And that is usually done in the porcelain, the porcelain furnace. So the, the, uh, the firing cycle, the preheating, the firing of the opaque dentin, vacuum, and glaze to subject all uh, to vacuum. That is why your porcelain, uh, is usually your porcelain uh, furnace, is um, uh, produced in such a way that uh, if there's air that is uh, within the system, the porcelain furnace will get rid of that so that uh, it doesn't come to, I mean, get your job uh, uh, to produce. Uh, deficiencies that will not be uh, suitable for a final product. Then preheating is, uh, is to achieve necessary 
I mean, it's necessary to prevent condensed mass from formation of steam, which can cause cracking. So your furnace is there and it's ensuring that um, once you are firing, it doesn't allow steam, it doesn't like, like allow air, it's done under the queue and then um, everything that you, everything that we have put together uh, into the ceramic system, ceramic layering remains and do not alter uh, according to your uh, intention when you put them together. Then you do the staining, which is a part of characterization. You want to make it look exactly to uh, look natural or look exactly like the uh, appliance, I mean the tooth that is adjacent. Let's say you are replacing a tooth or the, uh, the uh, a crown that is next. It, that, that is the natural teeth now that is next to the tooth on the on the bridge or that is next to the crown the pjc in the mouth of the patient so you want to do some characterization staining here and there and then once that is achieved of course your job is glazed and you get a final product a final Okay, I can see some text messages coming in. I mean, chatting. I will not attend to that now until we're done with our lecture. Okay, the types of glaze here yeah, and the advantages. Uh, you know, glaze is to make the end product to be glossy, shiny, and to preserve the integrity of the job. So, uh, this involves the application of glaze material and applied to the surface of the restoration. For those who have seen it done or who have been it, you know, familiar with them, what I'm saying. And it's subjected to firing temperature, which must be lower than initial firing temperature. Otherwise, it will, it will damage the job. So after you apply a, a glaze, yes, it has to be uh, lower temperature than the one you use in firing the uh, restoration to get what you want. It is safe glaze. Objective of glazing. Uh, let's look at objective of glazing. Enhance aesthetics, like I said. Hygiene improves strength, reduces wear by opposing teeth. Um, porcelain metal bond, chemical bonding, adherent uh, outside layer, mechanical bonding is mechanical interlocking. Now, if it's chemical bonding, uh, adherence is due to the uh, oxide that is on the copy. And if it's mechanical, of course, there will be some roughness of the surface which is usually produced by uh, some blasting and uh, so that there could be uh, bonding. And uh, this bonding will prevent uh, marginal uh, problem because it will make the marginal fit to be better and it will be fracture resistant. Of course, there's nothing with advantages that you don't have disadvantages. Poor aesthetic when compared with all ceramic restoration. You see, no matter how good your Meta ceramic system is, if you look at all ceramic, all ceramic is better because there's no meta in it at all. So it's very good on this aesthetic. And it's not as if meta ceramic isn't good when it's very, in fact, we see excellent job done by our colleagues. But if you go to a deeper uh, scrutiny, you see that the uh, meta ceramic is still a little lower in aesthetic advantage than. Um, uh, or ceramic. You still see that margin due to metal framework. So all these are just uh, you know, going to the, the full details, the nitty gritty to make sure things are excellent. So those are the disadvantages. I don't think we, anybody will want to uh, say that is common or it is very critical consideration. Let's move on now. Other metallic Metal ceramic system. We have so many other metal. You know, I told you ceramic system is very wide. So these are other metal ceramic system. Like I told you, then we have sewage good alloy foil ceramic crowns. Uh, it, it's a novel idea. It's not common this day. This is a novel way of metal frame without casting. The system was developed by two gentlemen called Chosha and Whiteman. The supply is fifty, and I told you that time that the switch is usually supplied in a strip. The foil is supplied in strip. An example of a brand that was used is 
captured P and G. This, the, the strip is waved and burnished into required shape. That is, you don't need uh, all this firing and all that. It is a uh, ceramic uh, system. Then the porcelain jacket crown, uh, they also construct, uh, constructed that way. You, you, you squeeze it, you punish it. The castable glass uh, ceramic pressable uh, uh, ceramic, uh, ceramic pressable ceramic is uh, also by casting using centrifugal casting machine. So these are different types of system or, uh, or that are available in metal ceramic. And we can go on and on. Glass infiltrated ceramic cut down uh, system. These are structural for ceramic system. They are manufactured through a unique glass infiltrated process. And these are not done in the lab, so but they are just system that you need to be familiar with. Like I told you the other time, I talk of die cup, fabrication of a die cup crown, crown. These are different stages. Um, I will not want us to spend much time talking about this. We can read them up as you listen to this video. So that, uh, because we don't do them in the lab, and then they're just for our head knowledge. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate that uh, we are together. I really appreciate that we are together, all true. We, we don't have a, a side uh, noise. And um, someone like Koke, uh, Inda Mola, uh, Mubarak, Oh, my barack is no longer here. Um, barack probably left. Kasim is still here. Maybe you want to ask questions now. You want to ask for more explanation. You want to make contribution. Uh, we are free. The floor is free now. Just unmute your. Just unmute your mic so that you can be able to. Uh, please, let's make it participatory. There's no doubting. Please, if there's any observation, don't feel free. We are all learners. We are all learners, and um, there's no doubting the fact that I impart your learning, you impart my learning as a teacher. That is how uh, teaching is all about. It's two way, just like a communication. If I'm communicating, you are not responding, there's no communication. If you are responding uh, to my communication, it means you are hearing me. So it's very important that uh, I don't need to be saying this, because as students, you should know that you should listen and give feedback. So that is ceramic system. You want us to, uh, you want to give me questions, you want to ask questions, you want to make contribution, please feel free. Wow. Okay. Are you Damala? You want to tell us something? Because I don't want us to just end it without asking questions. Okay. Uh, Mubarak. Are you Damala? And uh, Kazim has left. Okay. Kazim is still here. Um. During the period that you've been on internship so far, and for Barak that has ended this, uh, do you have anything you want to share with us about ceramic, similar or different from what I have said so far, or to complement what I have said? No, unmute your mic. Oida Molani, you want to speak? Go to your mic and unmute it. I hope you are not finding it difficult to do that. Okay, sir. Thank you so much for the wonderful lecture. We really appreciate it. You've talked uh, at length and you've enlightened us uh, about the basic precept we need to know about the porcelain. 
and I would just like to shed more light to the better understanding of my um, upcoming uh, students, you know, to get a more clear picture about what we've been talking about. But as I as I see, it looks so a bit strange to them. So and that is how it looks to us too when we are still a student before we have the opportunity of knowing how the things looks like and the method of uh, doing it. So most time um, during the worst pattern we we are in the projection of the coping in what's the pattern we are taught that there should be metal display as in the neck region or the gingiva uh, region of the metal coping in order to allow the the the, the uh, end result of the material of the ceramics to flush in to the gingiva uh, margin of the patient in order to reduce wearing off of the uh, the the ceramic the ceramic and metal region of the um, of the um, ceramics. So I'm also concerned to the firing and the build up of the porcelain. The temperature cannot be generalized because each a manufacturer is specific in their in their materials, whereby most of the material will come with their own uh, prescription in firing their uh, materials, because the we we have different manufacturing companies whereby they they have they know the content and the method of firing, which will give a reasonable result without. Um, without uh, causing any problem. So I think number one as the ceramics, going through the manual of each material to be used, I think is a is also encouraged. And also in the production of um, the ceramics, though I'm not really used to the centrifugal casting process but the, because I only, only see the process whereby the user the induction casting machine so and most of mostly most of the materials used like the nickel chromium uh, in terms of the framework most of them doesn't require um, as flux because they are their content there is flux in their content already so in the process of that, you don't need to add additional flux. And after the casting, and most of the selection of, we have the selection of casting ring, which we have various type of casting ring. We have the metallic casting ring, we have the rubber, and we have the castless ring, which is in form of a sheet, whereby after you've casted it alongside with the ring, the class uh, castless ring, you can place it into the furnace whereby both the 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 stuff and the and the wax will burn out itself. So and with that, you don't have uh, problems uh, in 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 the casting. And another major thing is during your wax pattern in the process of investing. So it is advisable to uh, to reduce the surface tension on the material in order to reduce bubbles on the final casting of the metal. Whereby you will have to use wet tests, wet tests to to clean off the wash surface before pouring your investment materials. Whereby we have various investment materials, and due to some hazardous process, the laboratory procedure are restricted in using. The, so material that is less hazardous to 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 the head, to human head. I'm also in the process of doing porcelain. There, as a practitioner, you want need to be extraordinarily careful because of the erosion being produced from anything ceramics. Because 
you cannot but be exposed to it. But the truth of the matter is you can always prevent yourself from it. So the ceramics materials are all are in powders and they and they are contain much of silica. So there is no way you will do it without inhaling them. That's why um testers have proven that our ordinary face mask is not really ideal for the pro procedure of um the for, of ceramics, whereby it is recommended to use the N95. There is a, a face uh, a face mask recommended for the procedure of doing that porcelain itself is a is N95. So to reduce the erosion, I mean the dust particle, because most of the time you see dust coming out. And behind those dust, you see there are a lot of particles you cannot see that only your you only what you can just feel is when you are inhaling them. And it's better you prevent that. You prevent yourself from inhaling it. Okay, okay. Uh, Oida, uh, you you really have uh, even delivered another lecture. And this is very interesting. Yes. Very interesting. That is what I'm expecting. Um, even from those, your junior ones that are around to make contribution. I have sent to them uh, some days before now about the topic. So I was expecting somebody to have read, I read it up and then um, true question at me, even make me to go and think again. I don't get challenged. I think uh, we need to do that. Uh, one important thing that you said, the face mask now, you know it's not protective enough. In the past, we thought it's so protective. And now because of COVID-19, a lot of development and awareness have been created, which made it now very possible yes, for everyone to know that uh, uh, this uh, face mask that we use, though the those who are not uh, in the field, they say nose mask, uh, nose cover. <laughs> as if yes. it's only nose that they cover. <laughs> so yes, as a matter of fact, awareness of uh, really reason and uh, it has helped a lot. So fine. Um, yes, yeah, I like your contribution and I appreciate that. I don't know if there's anybody who want to ask okay. question or make another contribution. Wow. Okay. You want us to say uh, happy day to every one of us? Or you want me to ask questions? Thank you, sir. Okay, if you want me to ask questions, I'm, I'm willing. I'm willing. What is the process of manufacture of ceramic? What is it called? Yeah, what is the process of manufacture of ceramic? What is it called? It is called fleeting. Fleeting. <laughs> Fritzing, Oh, you got that? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, my, it's called fritzing, sir. It's called fritzing. Oh, great. It's good to hear you. that because um, you make it participatory. Okay, let me ask another question since you are not asking me questions. I will ask another one now. Um, the, the classification and classification of ceramic system is divided into two. Name them. Another one we put some Ah, hello. Yes, now. Yes, now. No ceramic. What do you call them? I don't want you to. Based on fabrication method. Based on what? Based on fabrication method. Okay. And we have based on subtraction uh, subtraction of core material. Substructure of core material. Okay. That is good. Anybody want to make additional action? And Mubarak, you want to say something? Please, can you make it? I see you are trying to speak. Ah, we are not hearing you. You've not muted your. No, we are not hearing at all. We are not hearing at all. 
There's something wrong with your mic. You have unmuted it, but yet. Okay. Speak now, maybe you can hear again. You know what? Your mic is far from your mouth. You are just faintly here. Hello? Ah. Uh. now. Yeah, we're hearing now, yes. So, so when I when I like that, it's not too well. Thank you. It has gone again. We are not hearing again. Can I? We're not hearing again. Okay. okay. Um, the man is moving, he's making an effort to make sure we, are in. we hear him. So let's go let's to this. It's very bad. It's very bad. I, I suppose it's network. Yes. Okay, no problem. Uh, it's been a while, and um, you know, usually when I finish this lecture, I will send the video to you. You look at it again. Uh, discussion can continue after. Just let me know. Yes. Uh, you can ask questions yes. later. You can come up online and discuss. I'm doing something big for your for your school. Very soon you will see it. It's not very big for the school. Um, very soon you see it, it will be all over in the internet, and everybody will see it. Uh, it will be to promote the school and to put the school in first position where it belongs. Forget about whether it is just coming up. Um, forget about whether we're just graduating the second set, or the third set now. First position is not how long you have been, but how excellent you have performed. And uh, we're exactly. in other uh, schools offering dental technology today by doing all these things online. And that's why I expect you to be uh, proud of this and also supportive of it as well. And to talk about it where it is necessary for you to talk about it. Okay, fine. Please don't just let it end. Look at the video again, listen to it. Once you do that, okay, sir. you understand and to be of benefit. So uh, let's call it today. I appreciate everybody. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, bye. thank you very much. Bye bye. I can't thank see you. Your face. Please look at my comments. Please don't forget to like my comments. So. Yeah, we are. Like that. Bye bye. 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 Hola. Hey. Oh. I miss you. Okay. Okay. <laughs>